right, here's the 411, folks. Just give him one of these. Welcome to the 411, folks, episode 32. We are back and we are ready to talk games. Jake, caught you off guard. Yeah, you said you're ready, but I'm not. Sorry, Jack. Um, so let's get straight into it. Uh, <laughs> do you want some time? No, well, there's no time now. Um, Jack, we, we really haven't prepared anything for today, so we're just basically going to talk about games. Cool. Because that's what we're here to do. We're back. We're ready to talk about games. It's been a while. Three weeks? Four weeks? Yeah, it's probably been a good month. Mm. Um, and I just told you before, the last note I had down to talk about on my on this podcast was the Pokemon Sun and Moon demo, but that game came out yesterday. So, so that's that's how long it's been. Let's start talking about Pokemon then. All right. Well, neither of us have played it, but we both own it at this point. Mm. Are you going to play it? I don't think so. It's tempting. Wait, we should clarify. You're not going to play it until Christmas. That's what we mean. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I just um, I have enough to occupy me until christmas um i can wait another month yeah but like, you uh it's just sitting out there i'm not doing anything else today and um it's quite tempting it's so quite tempting. i read that this is the biggest first shipment of pokemon games ever in its 20 year existence so the first shipment worldwide of physical copies of pokemon southern moon was 1 million that Nintendo wow. shipped out. So, they're expecting a lot. And then when I went in to buy it yesterday, I bought three copies. for Two for other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and one for myself. And... So, what... what did, which version do you think pe- more people would buy? Sun. It's always that sort of red version that, that's more popular. Why do you think that is, though? I have no idea. And always when you look up sort of the top games or whatever, you know, it's always the Pokemon Y or Pokemon um, Omega Ruby is always, you know, the better. It's always rated a little bit higher than the blue version. Mm. It's weird, isn't it? Well, because I found it... There's these things on Twitter that you can do. They're polls, essentially. And, and these big news sites like IGN, GameSpot, EB Games even were saying, which one are you going to pick up? And you can vote on mm. the poll and you can see how they're progressing. Everyone I voted on, they all seem pretty uh, even, even split between which people, which version people would buy. But when I went to buy it yes- yesterday, there were, I would say, 10 copies left of Sun on a huge, massive stand and I'd say about 25 left of Moon. Wow. Um, but yeah. And then I was talking to the guy who I bought it from. and he's That's like, a lot of copies of one game. Oh, I'm sure they're probably gone by now. Yeah, but I'm I'm just saying, does that usually happen when a game comes out? They have that many copies of something. I don't think so. Like, because you were, you were telling me you, you didn't you didn't think they were going to have any more by the time you got there. Yeah, because I got there about four thirty in the yeah. afternoon. But the guy I spoke to, he said, yeah, yeah, people have been buying two copies each and stuff, mm, and mm. it's a big but deal. It's a it's a really smart way that they've set it up since you know the '90s when the first game came out. You know, people do go and buy two copies of the game to get Sun and Moon. So, they're making massive sales in this game. Whenever they talk about the sales of Pokemon, though, they always sort of combine the two anyway, so... Yeah. I mean, um, I've never bought both versions. Up until, actually, I've bought now Pokemon Diamond when that yeah. first came out. And then I've bought Pearl a eight good, years later. Yeah, a good something. eight years later. Yeah, yeah, excuse me. Um... Other than that, I've never owned double copies of Pokemon. Mm. But, who knows? Pokemon Sun and Moon might be the one to do it for me. That'd be pretty cool. Do they have files? I don't think so. <laughs> that's, that's still big thing that I'm missing, hey? Files. Like, just give us an option to make a sep- another file. Why? Why would you want that? So, you don't have to start your whole game again if you want to play it from the start. Or you just buy a second copy. I know, that's what they do to you. you. They make you spend another $60 rather than just having a separate save file. Like, you know, what if you know there's a family who just wants to buy one game 
they should be able to play on different save files you know that was a big problem when we were growing up we only had one copy of pokemon yellow mm. but we all had to share that same file is it not saved on the ds but on the game card no idea hmm anyway but um it it is smart of them obviously it's pokemon so they know they have to give supply and demand so there's lots of copies out there but mm. you know what hasn't got a lot of copies out there nes mini yes that's <sighs> true i kind of suspected that though i didn't think it would be this bad yeah but i mean give it another month or just wait till january they'll they'll be restocked and they'll all be there that's the problem though I and I'm sure a lot more people wanted this for Christmas, and I mm. and there's no more for Christmas, at least in Australia. What is that? What they're saying? No more until well, after Christmas. EB Games, the biggest game place here in Australia, it has isn't getting more stock until January. They've come out and said that. Who knows if Target or Big W might get a few more in? But I wouldn't get my hopes up. Um, well, pre-order. Yeah, I should have. No, that's it. That's the thing, though. And then I feel like Nintendo, they've, they've got me. Yeah. I I was keen on it, but I wasn't. I probably wasn't going to get it. I was just. I just like the idea. But now that it's sold out, now it's rare. Now it's rare. <laughs> I want it. You yeah, know, the yeah. thing I can't have. I want yeah. it. Same with Amiibos. They maybe did that. It's it's their ploy. It's this, it's yeah. Do. Well, not in Australia. I mean, in America, they were all sold out and everything. In Australia, you can get whatever you want. But look at look at now. There's a amiibo surplus. Mm. And they're trying to get rid of them. Yeah. Most of them are like sixty percent off. Yeah. So it's working. They they put this exclusive thing over it, and then I've been reading or listening to other podcasts saying maybe this is since Nintendo got a taste of that exclusivity buying out stock levels with the Nintendo Wii. You know, when that first came out, people stores couldn't get restocked for another month or so because it was so popular when that first came out. And then they were saying, since they are doing it with the NAS Mini, maybe they'll do it with the Switch as well. So, basically they're saying pre-order Switch. I guess so. Let's just talk about this NES Mini for a second here. Give me three good reasons why you actually want this. Uh... <laughs> well, just give me one. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I would like to... Um play the original metroid and um there's something else on there i, want, I really wanted to play can't think but but like my argument I, I i gave you this argument a couple days ago as well you can play all the good games that are on there you can play on the 3ds mm. all the other games that you can't play on the 3ds are shit i can i know i can see myself buying it playing it for 30 minutes yeah and just putting it away I've been downloading quite a few um, of those virtual console games lately, and um, all the NES ones are just, they're so, just, they've, they've aged so badly, they're mm. so terrible. The Super Nintendo ones are actually pretty good, but the NES, oh, I, it's, I just, it's... I, I think they, I think they need to do the, um, I think they should have done the mini Super NES rather than the NES, just because the games are just, they're not good. We're only saying that because we didn't grow up with the NES. That's true. So for us, there's no nostalgia there. Yeah, that's true. There'd be, yeah, there'd be a lot of people who would want this just for that nostalgia. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, I'd say a very finite percentage it is of people. The, it is their first console, isn't it? Nintendo's first console. Uh, I think there was something before that. Something Famicom or no? I think I think. Was so. that another name for it? No, that was a Japan only though. Famicom. Oh, okay. There is there is a mini Famicom coming out in Japan now. Yeah. Um, so maybe that was it. What was that thing that you know that Rob the robot thing came with? Was that a console? Or was that just a toy? Don't know. Should probably do some research. But like a lot of people are saying that because this has come out, maybe next year or a couple of years from now, they will bring out Super Nintendo um, Mini. Do you would you want that? Yes. But it's the same thing, like, they've brought out Super Nintendo games on the Virtual Console for 3DS, and they're bringing out all the, the good ones. There's not many good ones left that you can't get anymore. You know, you've got all the Donkey Kong countries, you've got Super Mario World, you've got all the, sort of, I think Mega Man's on there now. You know, all, all the good ones. Uh, 
I don't know, I'd still like it. I want it for the controller. Remember how cool that controller was? Mm-hmm. But it's just something that you're paying mm, 80 90 dollars or something for this mini NES, yeah. and yet you're paying 10 plus dollars for a virtual console of the same game. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a good, really good price for it all, but um, yeah, I really don't see you playing many of it. Like, I mean, like it's sort of like the Rare Replay that came out mm. with 30 games on it. There were some really good games that I spent a bit of time on, like the Banjo Kazooie, and the you know I still haven't played Perfect Dark actually. I've got to get into that. But then there's these really there's about 15 games where I'm not going to touch. Like I I played them for about a minute just to see what they're like, and they're just they're just so old. They're just crap. Mm. You know. So I don't know. My friend does have a NES Mini because um, he works at JB Hi-Fi, and he quote unquote pre-ordered it, ordered it. Um, so maybe I should just give it a try first and see what I think either way I'm sure I'll get over this you just want it on your shelf don't you yeah it looks so cool it's so tiny it's tiny hey it fits in your hand doesn't it I think so that'd be so cool because yeah. I won't need it I'll just place it on top of my DVD player or something I swear to god you, like when the day comes they release a mini Nintendo 64 that will be the day where I just I lose it like, I swear to God, I'd do, I'll do a five-hour podcast just on that. I swear to God. It would be amazing. Could they fit 30 games on that? As in, like, w- w- what would be the culling process for those 30 games? Oh, they'd have to... Because oh. there, there really aren't many games on the Nintendo 64. But there, the, there, are, there are a few that are just really good. <clears throat> then it comes into, um, as with Rare Replay, they would have to get licensing yeah. for, like, GoldenEye and yeah. stuff. But still... I mean, if they did release it, I don't think I'd want them to bring out Ocarina of Time on it or Star Fox because, you know, you've you've got remakes of them already. They would, they would be on there for sure. But, I mean, how many times have they, you know, brought back these games, you know? I mean, I, I would love to see Super Mario 64 because when they remade that, it was different on the DS. Mm-hmm. So, I, I, just a good port. Come on. <laughs> Phone off the table. It's about you, actually. Excuse me? I oh, don't know. Someone's talking about you. Great. Okay. Um, no, the, the Ocarina of Time and, and Star Fox, said Ocarina of Time especially is I what know. is the m- m- the pinnacle point of the 64. I but I, but I guess it's okay because if they did have a mini N- N64, they would have the actual controller and people would want to play the games on that controller. So. Man, that'd be so cool. Yeah. Because the mini mini NES, the, the graphics are untouched, aren't they? You, uh, you can... Um, I think they've done it so it fits widescreen now, okay. but you can do it so it does a 4x3 aspect ratio. Yeah. yeah. And then there's another setting, I think, where you can make it look as if it's um, retro. It, like, gets... How, how it was. Yeah. Yeah. It gets all... What do you call it? Like, when you... You know with those old TVs, you get close yeah. to... You can see the individual... Pixels. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it turns um, into that. And I remember the N64, a lot of those games, if you look at actual images of them now, they're really blurry. Mm. There's like a lot of blur to it. And I think that's just to sort of cover up the ugliness of some of those graphics. Speaking of Mario 64, I was watching a... Someone did a race on it uh, on YouTube this week. Uh, I really want to play that game again. Yeah? Yeah. It's been a while, hasn't it? It's been a while. Yeah. So I'm just tossing up uh, on where would I play it on. Wii U. Yeah? Downloaded on the Wii U, yeah. Because, I mean, when's the last time you played it? On your DS? Mm-hmm. And that's not the true Mario 64 experience. No, and that it's was different. That was probably... And you didn't have a joystick as well. You had to use the D-pad, yeah. which was just crap. Oh, my God. I remember when you first got that game, I was like, wow, like, I'm going to spend hours on this. So I got a DS, and I put it in, and then I realized, yeah, there's no joystick. Yeah. So how can you play this? It's just crap. It was tough. Yeah. And plus, you start the game as Yoshi, not Mario. Yeah, it's another thing. (laughs) That's not cool. It was a good good twist on it. I suppose for people who are looking for something different. Yeah. I liked it. Because you guys play as Luigi and Mario as well. Yeah, yeah. And no, but this... I, I would rather you have you start as Mario. The game's exactly the same as it was, but there's a certain part of the game. Maybe when you get maybe twenty stars or something, you have the option to play as some other characters. You know, mm. not starting as something else. I just want that. I want that initial nostalgia as soon as you know you Mario comes out of that pipe and 
Because yeah. imagine how amazing that must have been, like for people who grew up on the NES and Super Nintendo playing those 2D Mario games, and then the very first 3D Mario game comes out, and Mario comes out of that pipe, and then you're first controlling him around this castle. Like, imagine that experience for people. It's cool if you can remember it because the pipe comes up and Mario Mario jumps out, and then like the camera's always turning around him. Yeah, yeah. So you know, ah, oh, this is 3D. It's for like, sure. whoa, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that was really clever. That was really cool. Um, speaking of Mario, Jake, I've been getting into the old 2D Mario games. I've downloaded on my 3DS. Super Mario Bros, Super Mario Bros 2, Super Mario Bros 3, and Super Mario World. And I've been uh, tackling them. Yeah. As, as well as the Donkey Kong Country games as well. So the original Donkey Kong Country, um, number 1, 2, and 3. Is this kind of getting you prepped for Super Mario Maker? It kind of, yeah. I mean, like, I, it wasn't. It was unintentional, but um, I don't know. I, I was really just looking for a quick, easy game to play. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely not easy. But um, I just started... Because I already had Donkey Kong Country on there. And I just started um, playing around with that. And it was it's actually really fun. It's tough as well. Really hard. But then I got number two. Number two, number two is a little bit easier. Number three gets back to a really hard challenge as well. Mm. But um, And then those Mario games. They, uh, they've, they've sort of changed the graphics a bit on them as well to, to make them look better on the 3DS. But um, Super Mario World by far is... Like the most superior game to all four of them. It's good. It's tough as well. So Super Mario World was the only one to come out on the Super Nintendo. The other three were the NES. Uh So that was number one, two, and three. And number two is just what the fuck were they doing with that? Oh yeah, what is that? That is unplayable. Like that's not even a. No. That is crap. That game. Because that was a US. Well, that wasn't released in Japan. Oh, really? Yeah. Super Mario 2 for them is called... The Lost Levels? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's amazing. That's okay. great. Um, but Super Mario 2 is just... It's not a Mario game. Mm. So you're saying I should delete that one and get The Lost Levels? Is The Lost Levels on there? The Lost Levels is on there, yeah. Get The Lost Levels, because they're super difficult, but some awesome courses in there. Mm. I've played it because um, on the Wii, I think it was like Mario's... 15th anniversary or something mm. on the Wii they put they re-released the Super Mario All-Stars oh uh, yeah yeah the it, deluxe wasn't it yeah the SNES games yeah. we had we had that version okay we had that one yeah because I, I remember we played all of them all the time yeah but I remember it was like we didn't have the separate cartridges we just yep. had the it was all in the one and it had Mario 1 Lost Levels probably I think 2's on there too yeah because I remember we played 2 and, Su- and Super Mario Bros 3 we definitely played 3 as well three yes three with the it's sort of like the stage yeah you go off the stage and that's a good one it's a really good one super mario 3 and um super mario world uh th- are really good yeah They're excellent games but um yeah n- number one of course it's just you know it's really really it's 1985 or something it's just really <laughs> basic and the, the most annoying it's a really good game but the most annoying thing about it is you only have three lives and for me i got to about I got to world two, level two or something, mm. and then I finally died and had to start all the way from the beginning again. Mm. But I couldn't see any way of actually attaining new more lives. Mm. So it's like you have to beat the game with three lives. I'm sure that's not the case, but there was no way that I could get lives. I, I, I had no idea how to do that. But um, it's th- that's what makes it really hard. Um, but yeah, can, other, you, otherwise really good game. Are you compelled to beat it? Yeah, like I kept retrying and everything until I got over it. <laughs> right. But it's just, yeah, that thing of only three lives and not being able to get any more. Um, Super Mario 2 I played for literally two minutes because I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Then Super Mario Bros. 3, um, there were ways of getting new lives, so it was much easier to um, play through. Um, I got to the boss level on Super Mario Bros. 3, and I'm pretty sure we never did that. Because you're battling the boss on the, on, the, on the ship, it's on the boat. Did we mm. ever get past that? Because I, I think we only stayed on that first map. We could never get past that first map. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Mm. We were really bad at games. Oh yeah, yeah. We were terrible. Yet we were so, like, we didn't mind playing the same thing over and over yeah. and over. We just kept retrying and retrying, but we were just terrible at that. <laughs> because like, I, I'm getting up to the parts where we were when we were kids, and we were stuck on that level for for years. Yeah. But I'm getting up to them within minutes now, so I've you come know a what? long way. <laughs> well, I was about to say, I don't think you have because yet you're still stuck in the same part in Ocarina of Time when you were a kid. Yeah, I'm using guides to get past that. So. Ugh, um, 
No, but Donkey Kong Country, that original Donkey Kong Country game, do you remember the level we actually got up to? Um, is it kind of like Temple Ruins? Area? Yes, yes, that's, that's the one. That's exactly where I got stuck when I bought the game on Wii Virtual Console. That's where I'm stuck now. How do you do it? I can't beat it. Ah. I can't beat it. So this is like World 2... It's towards the end of World 2, I'm pretty sure. Uh-huh. Um, because oh there's those tyres that you yeah, have to yeah, bounce yeah. off. So the rats are running along those tyres and they're moving across and... Forward. Yeah. And oh, it's just ridiculous. I can't <laughs> beat that. <laughs> wow, there you go. Yeah. But um, the, the minecart levels? Oh, my. Excellent. Well, I only got to play one of them because there's only one before that temple ruin. Thing. Oh. So, but the, the one that, that's on there is just amazing. And do you find it that you like let your eyes go lazy or something or well, yeah you can't blink yeah you can't blink at all yeah because it, it, it's just they, like these carts are coming at you so fast and everything and then you got to jump at certain times it's all about timing in that yeah um it's yeah it's just really good um and that's a, that's quite late that came out in the um super nintendo quite late mm -hmm. as well as donkey kong 2 and donkey kong 3 country 3 which is diddy's no dixie kong it's a dixie kong game or something mm -hmm. um and then you're, you play as Dixie Kong and you've also got Kitty Kong with you who's like a toddler or whatever but that came out in 1996 which is when the N64 came out so that's one of the last games that came out on the Super Nintendo wow okay so um, and it actually looks pretty good yeah it looks pretty decent um, comparing it to like an older game for like when the Super Nintendo originally came out so, oh. so I've got games spanning from on my virtual console I've got Super Mario Bros which is like 1985 all the way to Donkey Kong Country 3 which is 1996 so there's a massive difference there, but still, there in that ten year span or eleven year span, it's just all two D, mm. and then finally, um, you know, they bring out the first three D game for Mario. Also. But look at that quality, though. You're playing games almost thirty plus years old. Yeah, yeah, and yet there's still quality. There's still challenge in Yeah, them. and they're still they're still fun, because um, it really got me. I've only played a couple of hours in Donkey Kong Country Returns, the new one. Yeah. Um, which was a while ago, and I was having trouble remembering what it was like. So after playing a few hours of Donkey Kong Country, the original one, I went back to the new one, and i got to say, the original is so much better. Like, the new one is just... I don't know. Like, it's, a, it's nice to look at the nice graphics and everything, but just... They don't have this... The atmosphere is gone for the... It's, it, there's no... I don't know. It doesn't feel like Donkey Kong Country at all. Well, they had to they had to modernize it. I know, I know, but like I don't know. It's just lost something. I it's lost something. For I me. think you'd much prefer the Tropical Freeze that's on the Wii U. Mm. That is a lot of people say that's a lot of a lot better. That one. That is one of the best platformers ever. I would mm. say amazing game. Mm. Um, so I think you'd much prefer that one. Um, just because you're right. Um, I think what you said about the atmosphere. Mm. Each uh, level. Uh, like world uh, I should say is so much more different and uh, variety compared to the last mm, you know mm. um, which I think which what is what Donkey Kong Country the original did so well um, but yeah how about that music though oh amazing music the first world that first as you come from Donkey Kong's treehouse yeah 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 amazing and uh, best music I'd say without a doubt is when you're on the um, underwater underwater yeah and you get that like swordfish yeah so good yeah ah uh, when, whenever you get one of those animals as well it's just it's awesome yeah uh anyway well that's what you've been playing i've been playing no new games either um but i've been playing the bioshock collection mm. so i had a weekend off last weekend a rare weekend rare weekend off oh a rare weekend eh donkey kong no golden eye no <laughs> no no but um, I smashed through Bioshock 2 in one weekend. Wait, did I say Donkey Kong for Rare? Rare does Donkey Kong, don't they? The country, yeah. Yeah, okay. The old ones, not yeah, the new ones. Yeah. Continue. Uh, so I, I smashed through Bioshock 2, then I started Minerva's Den, the DLC, which everyone raves about. Mm -hmm. um, that, I got about an hour and a... Can you just hold it for a second? Okay. There's a... Probably the listeners can hear that fucking car rumbling out there, so I'm going to go shut some windows. Well, you can pause it. And we come back. All right, close the windows, but didn't really make a difference. Continue. We're back. Um, yeah, just had a quick Facebook break. Oh, that's nice. What was I talking about? 
Oh, yeah, yeah. You said Minerva's Den. Yeah. Um, yeah, everyone raves about that DLC. Anyway, I got... It started off pretty good. I got about an hour and a half in, and my Xbox froze. Or well, the game froze, I, I should say. That's never happened to me on Xbox One before. You know why? Why? It's because you need the Xbox One S. Perhaps. Yeah. Anyway, I was really frustrated, so I put it down, because the save point, the last time I saved was very far away so I'm never picking that up again um I, I I probably put it down because I had a I probably had the Xbox on all day mm. so maybe it just overheated mm. anyway so and then the next day I started Bioshock Infinite I got about halfway through that and I'll I'll smash that out this weekend or something so much Bioshock yeah great series I can't go back to it like why not I've, I've, I've played the first two that's that's it for me. I have no drive to go back to that series. So good. Everyone says Bioshock One is better than Two. I disagree. Mm. Bioshock Two has a much better story. The sequels always sort of better because you I mean they have to improve mm-hmm. on what they did the first time. Yeah, I say that's, that's an argument for like nostalgia. People like are so. Well, I know. Yeah, I say like because Bioshock the combat is really cool. You you got all these cool weapons and traps and. Um, you have your guns and stuff, but you also have your left hand to do all the magic, like mm. the ice and fire stuff. And then I found that I, in Bioshock 1, I hardly used all these cool, clever traps that you can you can set traps with guns and line wires and stuff. Uh, I used none of that in Bioshock 1, but I found it way more opportunities in Bioshock 2 to use all that stuff, and it made the game 10 times more better because I was using all these clever traps. 10 things. times more better? Yes. <laughs> Yes. Uh, more better. It was way more better. No, you don't say more better. You just say better. Yes. <laughs> I'm just caught up in the moment because Bioshock 2 is great. Yeah. It's more better than um, 1, probably. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. And then uh, now, this week, I've been playing uh, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney 2. Ooh, okay. And it's uh, very difficult. Have you finished the first one? Uh-huh. Okay. I finished that a couple months How ago. How many hours? I haven't checked. I think this first game took me a good 20 hours. Hmm. Lots of reading. Yeah, yeah. Which is good. It's like a book, hey? Yeah. Um, is it... how a Difficulty scale. Put it on the Scott difficulty scale. <laughs> it's difficult. Uh, Did you ever use a guide or look up stuff on Google? Yes. Because there are points where when it comes to crucial moments and you have to present pieces of evidence or answer the, the correct or thing. you just wanted to get it right. Well, if I didn't get it right, because you have this meter, every time you get something wrong, it goes down. Mm. If you get that fully down, you have to start the whole oh, case what? again. Oh, really? So I, I, I just didn't want to start over again. Maybe that's... Mm. Do you reckon that happens in the newer games? I don't know. Maybe because it's like an older game, that's how it was, you know? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It, it, um, it certainly does make it more stressful, but... But you, you kind of ruined it for yourself in a way, because you... you with now you you didn't make that decision. There's no sort of weight on that decision. No, because you, you you know it's going to be right. But there, are, I do take risks risks when my meter is full. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. But when it's low, I just because there's like ten hours or so there. No, not ten. Not hours. ten hours. That's like half the game. <laughs> like a say. couple of hours, as you saying. Yeah. Yeah. And then I have to. Ugh. Yeah. I'm not doing that again. So did you find that out because you you got it wrong the first time or something? No, that's just what I read. Oh, okay. When I was uh, deciding to purchase the game in the first so, place. So, that means you never got any cases wrong? No. Right Righto. But, that's so good. Okay. Because um, it is on my list to get the original trilogy. Um, and whenever I look up top ten lists, there's always Dual Destinies on there. Um, Phoenix Wright. But I, I think I need to play the original trilogy. You do, because it's a connecting it. story. Yeah. Um, and in between... Um, uh, the original trilogy in Dual Destinies there is a spin-off game called <laughs> I forgot his name there's another lawyer that you play as and he he, um, he is in the later games uh, the kid um, I don't think he's a kid well, he's younger oh man what's his name I know who you're talking about yeah yeah but anyway because he is in the later games you know sh- you know you would I need to play that game to find out who he is I don't you know? know because I don't know if that was that ever released here? Because I can't, no, I, can't I, find I don't it. think you can get it here as no. well. Yeah, 
So for us, we can only play one, two, three, five, and six. Yeah, yeah. And then there's other spin-off games where uh, I'm, I'm one of the main characters, the prosecutor, who you always play against is Miles Edgeworth, Edgeworth and he mm. has a spin-off game of his own, mm. which again you can't get here. Yeah. I mean, that's not connected to the main line of games, mm. but it's still part of the. Uh, there's also the Professor Layton um, spin off as well. With, yeah. With Phoenix Wright. And so. those physical copies are gone. Are yeah. They're gone. So, and then digital download is like $60. Yeah. So. I used to see them all the time everywhere, like a year or two ago, but now mm. just. Yeah. You're not going to find them. So unfortunate. Oh, it well. Is. But that's what I've been playing. And uh, like I said, I, I think I can tie myself over until Christmas for Pokemon with what Ace Attorney Ace Attorney 2 I think once I finish Ace Attorney uh, well I have Watch Dogs 2 on the way coming in the mail oh, soon okay. so I think once I get Ace Attorney 2 done Watch, Watch Dogs 2 should tie me over what about any Wii U games that you've gotten recently yeah I, um, I've almost finished Paper Mario uh, and then I've still got that Tokyo Mirage sessions mm. to go started that yet no no and that's a big game that's a big one yeah but I think uh, Watch Dogs 2 is the way to go Mm. I've been seeing more and more of that game it looks so much fun the the open world I gotta say looks amazing yeah I wish yeah I want someone to play that game with though co-op looks really fun Mm. hint (laughs) there's too many other things for me to get Watch Dogs isn't high on my list I gotta say I don't know. I'm not big on Ubisoft games because there's so it's like a collectathon. Yeah, and I hate that. But man, this looks so much fun. Mm, it does. Yeah. Um, there is another game that I have been playing as well, which is Skyrim. Mm. And uh, I put a good 15 hours into it, like playing it every chance I could get. I haven't played it in about a week now, though, because I've just been playing some other things. Um, but yeah, it's just like I remember. Um, and that's with all games I think when you haven't played them in a while and they come out as a remaster I think that's what they I think that's the good way of doing a remaster because um, if I turn Skyrim on now on my PS3 I'd I'd notice there's a massive difference but as I'm playing Skyrim now on the Xbox One it's like I can't really see a difference because it it looks how I remember when it came out so that's that's what happened to me with Twilight Twilight Princess Princess, yeah yeah so um, so that's a I think it it works well and um, yeah I mean I'm getting, you know, I'm doing all of these quests and everything, and it's just like I'm doing the original one. I think when, like, I don't know if it's worth it. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know if I want to put in another hundred hours because I'm doing all these quests and everything, um, and it's just sort of the exact same storyline as before, and I know exactly what's going to happen. But I think when when it's gonna what's going to change for me is when I get into the DLC. Yeah. Um, and I've got already got a few quests lined up for me to start those those DLCs, but I'm still just wanting to get all the basic things done first. Isn't so. the point of Skyrim is that this your second playthrough is should be completely different if you want it to be? <laughs> it should be, but I chose the same race again. Why? Because I loved my experience the first time so much. No, you should keep that experience like that. I know. You should have a I new know. one. I know. But the thing is, in the world of Skyrim, it's the land of Nords, right? So Nords are supposed to be, you know, born there. So I I played as a Nord last time and I really wanted to be a Nord this time just because, you know, I wanted to be part of Skyrim. I didn't want to be a something, you know, a Khajiit or... And Nords look like, and Nords look like humans as well. Mm. So I wanted to look like a human. Boring. Your, de- your fantasy is boring. <laughs> you have no imagination. Oh, I have no imagination, really. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you be a lizard I, man? I've seen you try to make a Super Mario... Make a course, Jake. I've seen you do that. Okay, so you can't say anything. Yeah, your course is way better than mine. I can't wait to make some good courses, hey? I've been in the mood to do Mario Maker again. For some reason. I don't know. You know what a game, a, a game that they, sh- they should have brought out on the 3DS? RPG Maker. <laughs> that would be cool. That would be cool. I've heard, though, um, there's first impressions uh, articles going up for Mario 3D- Super Mario Maker 3DS. Uh, they're saying that the touch screen is a bit constricting because of how small it is. Mm-hmm, it would be, yeah. Because automatically you're losing space from the borders yeah. where you get your tools from. Yeah. So it is a little bit constricting. But... And I've got the small one as well. Yeah. But that's just like a small thing. Otherwise, it sounds 
pretty much the same. You can still do everything though, so. But yeah. that's just coming from people who have played it on the Wii U a lot and yeah. going to a smaller screen. I haven't played it on the Wii U. Like I played it once. That's yeah. That's so true. I'm not going to notice a difference. Good point, Scott. I'm I seeing... do come up with Sorry. good points. I, I'm seeing two games on your shelf now that um, new games. One we've both played, Rhythm Paradise Mega Mix. Oh yes, we forgot to talk about these. Yeah, I love this game. It's it's amazing. Yeah, awesome. Um, really challenging though. I didn't expect this challenge. Yeah. All the gameplay that I saw looked really fun, and the music was really catchy. But it looked, you know, quite easy. But they were the easy levels. Hmm. Um, I've played close to about six hours of it now, and I'm getting to r- really close towards the end. I've got like a couple levels left to to beat, which is the really hard ones. But um, how far are you, are you through it? Yeah, have you sort of stopped? Yeah, I've stopped. But uh, I'm. A, I think. Like he's going like stages. I'm up to like the third stage, I think. Only because you've got a lot to go. Yeah, just just saying. Only because I, this game, brings out the completionist in me. Yeah, I have to get that. There's this thing like in one in each level, you have to get one beat exactly perfect mm, to get a star. To get like a star. Mm. If I don't get it, I have to reset. I have to do it again. And I think you get like a, a rating out of three or something, but you need like, in the top. You need like top eighty five percent or something to get, yeah, three stars or something oh, like that. Um, you need eighty percent or more to get a superb. Yeah, yeah. and I need that as well. <sighs> See, I, I would finish the game and then you should go back and do it. That's that's what I would do, to be honest. Yeah. Otherwise, you will never finish it. I know because there are some good levels that you're missing out on coming up. Like I would play all through the levels now. I can't do that though. There's you got this, to. There's something and, in and, me that. And then go back. There's something in me that I, I need. I need like hundred percent to to move on. I don't know. I'm not usually like that. Like I like. Have to... you played the ghost one? No. Have you got to shoot the ghost with the arrow? No. Oh, <sighs> missing out. What about the lumberjack? You got to chop the wood. No. Ah, oh, Jake. So far, my favorites though have been the badminton one. It isn't the oh, that's good. That's You're hitting that's badminton yeah, between yeah. two airplanes. Yeah, I love that. The music's great in yeah. that. And the other one is like the fruit rolling down the stairs. Oh, I was just gonna say that one. Yeah, yeah. That was really cool. Um. But when you get to a certain stage, I think, you know, you're up to stage three or something. I think there's like five of them. Mm. Then you do a sequel to all those courses. So it's like, um, what's the what's the one that you were saying that you like? The fruit, Just say the f- fruit falling down was it's called Fruit Stairs or something. Mm. It's called Fruit Stairs 2. Mm. And it's sort of a harder one. And the badminton with the um, planes, it's called Badminton 2. Mm. And it's just um, a harder version of that. And it's sort of like a longer version of that. Really cool though. Cool. So you play a sequel to all of them, and there's also like a, a list of uh, new ones which are supposed to be harder as well. Mm. Really cool though. Awesome game. It's great, and it's just, it's cool to pick up for five minutes and put down. Yeah. So it's just sort of like, and it's like, I mean, this is what this is what you know, like mobile games are so popular now because you can just turn on your phone, start playing a game, put it down. Mm. You know, um, but the 3ds like because there's no loading times this game is really quick to load you put it in start straight away you just press A like twice and you're already in you start straight away um, so that's why it's really good yeah yeah. and I was surprised just how good every single track is mm. like, there's no bad ones yeah yeah and that's a that's a really good effort I, I love the one where you're plucking the hairs as well you know oh yeah one? from like the onion or something yeah yeah it's his like it's his face but like yeah yeah that was really cool awesome but uh, another game I think these games came out at the exact same time. Mm. Mario Party, Star Rush. Yes. Thoughts? Because you have this, I don't. Yeah. So I was... I mean, I said before on this podcast that I was contemplating whether to get this or not because I was really disappointed with Island Tour. Island Tour is just a shit game compared to this. It's like almost, almost a perfect Mario Party game, Jake. What? <laughs> All that it's missing is the original... Mode. Oh, I was going to say, I thought it had it in there. No, no. Oh. Um, but I'm still waiting, like, because I've put in about ne- close, I think about seven hours now. Uh, I haven't lo- unlocked all the modes, right? I played about three or four hours, and then I unlocked a new mode. And this mode that I unlocked, it's called Balloon uh, Balloon Dash, I think, or Balloon Balloon Rush, or something like that. Um, it's like, this is like my favorite mode, mode to play in. So I had to... You know, the, the, the main mode is called Toad Scramble, mm. and that's, like, the main game, right? But you, you play a bit more of that, and you unlock... um, it, You have, like, star levels or something, and then when, every time your level increases, you unlock something new. Usually it's um, characters. You unlock new characters. 
Um, but then I unlocked a new mode called Balloon Dash. I think it's called Balloon Dash. And then um, it's just it's this amazing mode where it's like a completely different game. It's mm. it's this more reflects the original game. So this is this is if you want to play the original game, this is the as close as you're going to get to it. Okay. So Balloon Dash, I'll just explain a bit bit of it right now. Um, so you have to collect as many stars as possible, and the only way to do that is by landing on the star space, which is changing all the time after every single time someone collects it. Good. So that's Liking the same. This. Um, then when you land on it, you have to pay for the star. So pay 10 coins to get one star. Sometimes it'll have two stars, so you can pay 20. And sometimes it'll have three, so you pay 30. Okay. So if you don't have those coins, you can't buy them, obviously. And as you're going across, you collect... There's Every single time a new star appears, there's balloons that appear as well. And the balloons give you the coins. So there's no way to get coins unless you get those balloons. So you pop a balloon. Some, sometimes it gives you five, or sometimes it gives you 10. So you get those coins, and then you have to get the star. Every time a balloon pops... At the end of that turn, there's a mini game, mm. and the the maps are really small. That every single turn, there's definitely going to be a mini game because everyone's going to pop a balloon at least. Okay. So there's a mini game every turn. There's usually there's a lot of stars, so people are getting stars like every every turn or at least every second turn. Mm. So there's a lot of stars in that way. So it doesn't take you know five or six turns to get a star like the usual one. So it's a really sort of faster paced game like that. Um, Mini games are awesome as well, um, and you can go up to thirty turns. That's the limit. Look, this is a handheld we're talking about, though. You remember? I know. So, the thing you're saying is essentially what a shortened down mobile handheld. I shouldn't say mobile. A handheld version of the original. Use that word. No. <laughs> the 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 portable version of the original Mario Party. This is the exact same... That is exactly what you explained. Yeah. Like, I feel like that's how they should have done it in the first place. Yeah. Um, but it's already quicker because you're not waiting for everybody to finish their turn. You're doing all your turns together at the same time. Oh, okay. Um, and there's no track you're following, so you make your own track where you want to go. So there's a space for where you want to go, but you're making your own track. Um, okay. And you've got to sort of plan it because there's strategy to it as well because if your star appears over here... And you're, you know, 10 spaces away, but there's someone who's five spaces away. Mm. You know that the next turn, they're going to get that star, obviously. Mm. So maybe it's better that you don't go near that star. You go somewhere else because the star might appear over near you. Mm -hmm. So there's that strategy as well. So maybe just let them get that star and you go somewhere else because the star might appear near you. So there's that strategy as well. Sure. Um, but yeah, mini games, yeah, like I said, are really good. Every single one I've played is awesome. Um, yeah, just... So much better than Island Tour. Island Tour is just crap. Cool. It sounds really good. Yeah, it is really good. Can you play that balloon game on um, together, like with other people? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can. Yeah. So, damn, we should have played it. I know. But um, so I I always play the thirty turns, so as many as possible. Mm -hmm. The longest game that I've played, I think, is maybe just over an hour. Okay. So yeah, if you want to play a really long game, the longest you're gonna get is about an hour. See, that sounds okay. For a handheld, remember? Yeah, I, know. I want a three-hour game, though, Jake. <sighs> I've been watching... Uh, but again, that three hours could probably come from just watching other people's turns. That's where most of that is from, isn't it? Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, I've been watching a lot of um, Mario Party 10, again, on YouTube. Uh, man, that game has nothing. <laughs> that is a very barren game. Yeah. That so, was... Um, yeah, a lot of people t said that was shit, wasn't it? Didn't they? Yeah. Is that with that Mario Party Ultra Smash Tennis? Mario Tennis, sorry. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to that game. Why? What Ugh. are they thinking? They must know it's not a good game. Like, <laughs> That's give really... us, just give us modes. Just, But I, I don't even know, like, for this, for this Mario Party, why not just put in the original Mario Party mode so people can just play that? Why not just do that? Because they, no one would play the other modes. Right? But... <laughs> So if they know people want that so badly, why not just do that? I don't know. I don't know, Scott. Anyway. Um, so we've talked about a little bit the Switch. We're just going all, all over the place. I know, yeah. But uh, we, I hoped that the rumour mill would stop with the announcement of the Switch. But no. There's rumours every freaking week. Mm. And I'm sick At least of it we already. can say Switch now, though, not NX. That's true. 
but I'm sick of it already. So a lot of the rumors are coming from what the launch lineup for the Switch would be. Uh, rumors have come out more recently saying that Zelda is not going to make the is not going to make March now. <sighs> Which that's ridiculous. It's going to make March. I, I hope so because then who's going to buy the Wii U version if it doesn't make March? Are you saying Wii U version won't make March? No, both. Just oh, both. Zelda in general yeah, will yeah. not make March. Yeah. Therefore, it won't make the launch of the Switch. Yeah. In saying that, they're saying the 3D Mario that was showed off in the trailer will be a launch. I don't see how that's possible because so very little of that Mario game was shown, yet compared to like the 10 plus hours of the Zelda footage that's currently out Yeah, but they probably have a really good... They've probably nearly finished that Mario game. Think about how long they've been working on it for. They just didn't reveal anything from it. Yeah, yeah, but I just... Don't make people wait any longer for Zelda. I reckon... When's the next presentation? January? Yeah. I reckon they'll show us like a good 20 minutes of Mario. Well, not that long. Anyway. Why not? I don't think it'll be that long of a presentation. It's going to be the biggest game. Like... Anyway. This, this is gonna be this is gonna beat the excitement for Zelda, I reckon. This Mario game. Yeah, Mario does take rank over Zelda. Mm. Anyway, uh, they're saying that the Mario game is more in line with the Galaxy style, sixty four style. It has a mm. hub world where you can go into different levels. This is a rumor, of course. The biggest rumor that came out, uh, the the site Eurogamer broke this, is that there is potentially a third version of Pokemon Sun and Moon called Pokemon Star Pokemon Stars or something that will be coming to the Switch so you know how there's Star the... Rush? no <laughs> <laughs> so you know how there's the uh, what, what do you call it like Diamond Pearl Platinum yeah yeah. so this will be the this third the star. star a lot of people are saying this shouldn't have been broken it's really irresponsible of Eurogamer to break this news on the day that Pokemon Sun and Moon was released well, it, when you've got a story, why not? Like, well, they're saying this is the first time people have been angry at someone, like, or not the first time, but like, yeah. usually people are like, "Oh my god, you know, this is like a new thing. This is so exciting." But yeah. it's like now people are angry. Well, they're saying it's detriment to Sun and Moon's Sun and Moon sales. Which, oh, so people are, are going to wait, maybe, but I, I don't see why you would wait for just this very thin, thinly based rumor of just some sources. It does make sense though. So, uh, the, the report was saying that it will have the exact same map, exact same Pokemon, uh, but it would just be a graphical enhancement, mm. um, that kind of thing, a new story, um, and then it can, that it can communicate with your 3DS, mm. that's, that's what they're saying as well, that you can trade Pokemon to and from it. Well, this is, this would be their way to get all your Pokemon from your 3DS to the Switch, so then you've got it all in your Switch now. Every Pokemon game that comes out from now on, you've got it on your Switch already. That's, that's a good point, yeah. yeah. But um, I don't know, what do you think of this? Do you think that's a, a, a nice uh, step, a nice, like, yeah, I to get people from 3DS Pokemon to it, Switch? It's, it's got a... Uh, I don't think it... What, this time next year, do you reckon? Uh, no, they're saying it's pretty close to launch. Oh, that's too soon. Yeah. That's way too soon. You've got to at least wait a year, if not two years. Because that's usually the case. It's usually a year. Yeah, it's usually a year. But I think... I don't know. I think if it's if it's launch or close to launch, then why even release Sun and Moon on 3DS? Mm. You should have just waited for Switch and then make it a launch title. And that'll get Switch off the shelves. Mm. But, um... Yeah, I don't know. They were saying in this report too, you know that very first Sun and Moon trailer that came out that showed no gameplay? It was just like concept art on the walls. Oh, yeah, yeah. People opening up their 3DS and stuff. Yeah. People, developers. They were saying that there was clues for a Switch version in that trailer. So there's a screenshot they took uh, of someone working on the computer and like, what's that bird Pokemon? Like Pipek, Mm. I think it's called. There's like a, a 3D model of that on the computer and there's Japanese text next to it translated it, it's something it says something about like a a fully 3d high definition rendered version of pipac which could mean you know which doesn't transfer to which isn't graphical for the 3ds yeah, yeah you know what i'm saying yeah so it 
I don't know. People are really digging for this. Um, but I don't know. It makes it how that that's the str- it was even if it's not a launch title, this Pokemon game, mm. it would definitely like we're saying it should be in the first year. Mm. How strong of a lineup is Switch then? If we're talking Zelda, Mario, uh, the big Pokemon, three, big three, uh, and then there's this one that I don't believe for a second. But get this, okay? Remember Rayman Raving Rabbits? No. You know? No. It was like those white rabbit things that had like three or four games on the Wii. Oh, uh, yeah, they I were think like just so. just mini games yeah. and stuff. So there is potentially a Fire Emblem style of RPG with Mario and Rabbids crossover. How unbelievable was that? That sounds stupid. It does sound stupid. Um, but apparently that is a thing. And apparently it's going to be a launch title. What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> That's just why I'm sick of the rumours. Yeah, yeah. Because things like this come out. And who knows, it could be real, but why? Just why? Well, let's not advocate these rumours. No, I just wanted to bring it up. Mm. Because we both seem to be so against it. <laughs> That just sounds like a stupid idea. Yeah. Just, just give us a normal Fire Emblem game or something, mm. you know? Uh, I guess another thing that's just come off my head for for Switch stuff, price points came out, I think, last week. Uh, I think a retailer online uh, dropped a price uh, for £250. Yeah, which is? Uh, that translates to a, probably about... 400 I was going to say 350, 350 for us. yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, I expect it to be about that. Yeah, it can't be. It can't be four hundred or more. No, at, at the most three ninety nine. Mm-hmm. At the least two ninety nine. Yeah, so we're talking two to three hundred. Yeah, uh, to, three, three to four. Three to four. Sorry. Yeah, but if it is four hundred, it can't be four hundred. It's got to be three ninety nine. That makes a difference. It does actually. Yeah, you're right. Mm. It's a good. Yeah. So. Uh, what I was going to say obviously the, the that price ranges if there were to be bundles and like premium packs say if like one has more uh, space than the other or something like that but there's this new um, bundle deal for the Wii U which is pretty much for the holidays and it's like the last nail on the coffin for the Wii U yeah. to get more to get the last stock out but the and this is Australia only it's a Wii U that comes packaged with Mario Kart 8 and Super Smash Bros. Yet it's four hundred and thirty dollars. That's still too much. It's still too much, man. For me to buy something, oh, I'm never going to buy it because I know Mario Kart and Splatoon are coming to the Switch, so I would never buy it. Mm. But it's got to be like two hundred bucks for me to even consider it. Yeah, yeah. Like honestly, like would you? If you didn't have one, like. There's no way you could buy it for that much. That is an unbelievable price point. What are they going to do with these consoles that don't sell? I'm, so, I'm sure, like, um, you know, these retro game, gamer shops would buy them. Yeah. Would probably buy buy them all, whatever. And then wait 10 years, then bring them out and sell them for God knows what. <laughs> yeah. Because because now it's been announced that the production for Wii U has mm. ended. We've always said this on this show as well, that Wii U is going to be one of those rare consoles. Mm from years to come now and the the games are just going to be rare because it was such a anomaly for Nintendo yeah there aren't many of them in the world no because as of today Wii U was released four days ago four years ago today yeah yeah so that's not that's not long it's a short cycle really short um and so it would only have a four and a half year life cycle Mm. that's really short and like like 3DS will probably get six six years well, that's another thing too. People, uh, I was reading a lot of comments about this Pokemon Star thing that no one, what's in it, what's left for 3DS if Pokemon moves to Switch? There's uh, a lot still coming. I know, but I would say 50%, I'd say close to 50% of people still own 3DS for Pokemon. No, what? There's so much on 3DS other than Pokemon. Think about it though. Yeah. Well, I mean, the only game I owned on the DS was Pokemon. That's the only reason I bought it. So there could still be, yeah, just people like that who just buy it for, for Pokemon. Mm-hmm. I mean, with Pokemon Go as well, wasn't there a, just a spike in 3DS sales? 
when that sure. came out just just maybe people get trying to get back into pokemon who uh, haven't played it in years I, I haven't seen a statistic but i'm, I'm positive I'm, that, I'm just, that exists. I, I, I hear stories like that though that there was a spike in hardware sales and so there is i, I did read yesterday one of this morning that um there was a spike of 150 percent more uh day one sales than last generation pokemon mm-hmm. so what was that x and y so 100 worldwide 150 percent more people bought sun and moon mm. that's huge and we could credit that to pokemon go mm, yeah yeah um also have you seen well you probably haven't but the first episode of the anime began oh sun no and moon anime no i haven't so i read a kotaku rec- uh, article on yeah. it yeah um, shout out to, to Kotaku as well because I've actually that's my go-to site now yeah I always read pro, uh, Dragon Ball Super stuff about it yeah they always report on every episode oh wow okay um I'm yeah not... you haven't seen anything from it so <laughs> no well the English one's coming yeah yeah uh, so I'm I'm just not sold on the animation style for this oh all. it's crap hey it's really bad but um, I always regretted not watching I mean, now, because I watched the entire Pokemon series and I'm still up to, like, season 14 or whatever, but um, this Sun and Moon, I think, is season 19? Or season 20? No, it's season nine. Uh, season season 20. Pokemon Sun and Moon is season 20 of okay. Pokemon. Um, I'm probably going to watch it, like, every every week, episode, new episode that comes out. Mm-hmm. I'm going to start from the beginning, so... Well, it's like you said, uh, I don't I remember if you talked this on the podcast or not, but it's... Uh, Ash and his mum moving to Alola. Mm. Wait, is that what they do in every season? They move to a new region? No, uh, Ash does. But his mum doesn't. His, his mum doesn't. Oh, that's true. Well, so his mum comes this time. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, and then, like he said, he finds a school or something and he enrolls yeah. in the school. Yeah. And then so he's at school every day. Yeah, yeah. So it's basically, yeah, they, they it's not an adventure anymore. No. He stays there. But he does go out and explore the islands, but he'll always return to that school. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's very different. Yeah, and there's no gyms anymore either. There's there's what battle, battle island. Oh, I mean, trials. Trials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some of them, I think, tri- some trials doesn't mean a battle. No, and this is what happens in the Sun and Moon game. Yeah, yeah. Trials could mean uh, catching one Pokemon, a mm. specific type a of quiz. Pokemon. Yeah, that kind of thing. Which is cool. It shakes it up. Yeah. But I think a part of me is going to miss just the eight gym battles, and there's not even a Pokemon League. Yeah, but Jake. If we're talking about the anime here, we've got 19 seasons worth of that. 50 episodes in each season worth of <laughs> normal Pokemon, what you're talking about. It's time to shake things up. For the anime or the game? Like... For the anime. Maybe for the game as well. I mean, that's, this is what happens in the game. Yeah, yeah, I know. But we've got... We, we've You know, since the mid-90s, we've been doing the same thing with Pokemon. Mm. And it's it's good that they've shaken things up a little bit. You know, it's different. Just the animation style. Yeah, that's the only problem. It, because they've tried to sort of imitate Yokai Watch a little bit because Yokai Watch is so huge. They've gone for a more childish version, which mm. is annoying, but I think you'll get used to it if you um, just watch a few episodes. Speaking of Yokai Watch, you're interested in buying the new game. Yeah, I am. Even though I'm not really a huge fan of the original game, but as I said before, the second game's always better. It's always got improvements on the first one. Um, and this one. Every single time I see gameplay, I can see those little improvements. Yeah. From what I've read, it's just like everything that people found annoying in the first game has just been resolved for this yeah. game. Yeah. Um, which sounds cool. And it's kind of like this... Because I love playing games that are sort of set in Japan. Mm. Um, Yokai Watch 3 is set in America. So I really want this one because it is set in Japan. Mm. And it's a, 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 sort of an updated version of number one, so... Yeah, that's why I really want it. I'm hoping Yoko Watch 3 does come to here as well. Do you know if there's a big audience or not? It's it's not massive. So There's, there's some, but... Speak about... Because you teach... You're a primary school teacher. Yes. So you, you see what kids play and what kids are into. Mm. Do you see a split of... I don't know what's there. Is it, are people a kids more into Pokemon still, or is there a Yoko Watch thing happening? It's all it's all Pokemon. Really? And Minecraft. Oh, of and, course. And a bit of Skylanders. Yeah. The people who are into Yokai Watch are the Asian kids. Uh, <laughs> There's not many uh, Caucasians into the um, into the Yokai Watch. Mm. If if um, you know the Asian kids are, have Yokai Watch stuff out or something, it's usually you know the white kids who are like, "What's that? 
mm. you know um but it is on channel go yeah a lot so i mean i mean if your family does put on channel go for you to watch cartoons or whatever then you'll know about it but other than that you're probably not going to know yeah so but yeah pokemon's still massive people always have their pokemon cards out and yeah you can't beat pokemon wow that's so cool yeah although i would i would hate to see yoko watch fail over here i know yeah yeah even though i've never i've yet to support her i haven't bought a game or anything because it, it was uh, always talked about it as yoko watch is, is the new pokemon yeah it's kind of cool to to think that these kids that are kids now will grow up and think of yoko watch as we think of pokemon now do you think it's detriment to Yoko Watch that they said that it was marketed as the new Pokemon though? It was. I don't think it was ever marketed as that though. That's what people just said. Yeah. Because it is kind of similar. But yeah. I don't know. I, I'm I'm pretty interested in buying the second game. Um, I might wait for a price drop on it because it did come out kind of under the radar here. Maybe mm. in Australia mm. for at, at least it. Yeah. It did fall under the radar because a few big releases came out around the same time. Yeah. Um, and Yoko Watch 2 came out r- quite quickly afterwards as well. Like, it's only Pretty been... much a year, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Hasn't been long. Because you got the first Yoko Watch for Christmas and you're doing the exact same thing for number two. That's right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Anyway. Some big games. Um, Jake, let's finish off with a segment that we haven't done in a long time. This is an old segment that we did maybe maybe for the first few episodes. This is called Franchise Wars. Do you remember this? How could I forget? Yeah. So this is a segment where we, we talk about a game that we hope turns into a franchise or we could just to say, let's, let's never see a sequel to this. Mm-hmm. The game I've chosen is Captain Toad. Oh, oh yeah. The, it's sort of a forgotten Wii U game, isn't it? I think it was a pretty early game for it. Yeah. Um, this is a game that I really hope comes to 3DS at some point. Because I know a lot of the 3D, uh, Wii U games are coming to 3DS. Mm. And then they're also coming to Switch. And I guess Captain Toad is the only other one that I actually really want. So I've got Super Mario Maker and Yoshi's Woolly World coming to 3DS. We've got Splatoon and Mario Kart coming to um, Switch. Captain Toad is mm. just left there mm. and I really want to play that but if it doesn't go anywhere or if there's no sequel I'm never going to get to play that so mm. I really want a sequel to Captain Toad or I want a port to 3DS mm. do you think either of these are going to happen? I think it will skip 3DS and they will be a sequel on the Switch if not a sequel then it will be tied into the 3D Mario game because as, as a mini game yeah because the origin of Captain Toad was that it started in 3D World. It was oh, a, okay. It, it was like a little spin-off to 3D World. Yeah, yeah. And then they made a separate game to it. Because it can work perfectly for the mm. 3DS, but again, it could work perfectly as a side game to a bigger game. I don't, I don't know why it was a big AAA game as it was. Like, because it was, you know, just as expensive as all like the other. No, games, no. Is it? I bought it for fifty dollars. Oh, okay, so it was smaller. Mm-hmm. All right, because there are what forty levels. You play the first twenty levels as Toad, and the next twenty is Toadette, and then you go back to Toad for another twenty. I think so. Yeah. Oh wow, that's yep. full on. Was Toadette first introduced as in this game, or was no. Toadette an old character? No, she's an old character. Because it's the first time I've heard of Toadette. Toadette's awesome. Toadette. No, she's in, she's been in the Mario Kart, I think. Okay, I unlocked Toadette in um. Mario Party Star Rush and now I just play as, play as Toadette yeah so yeah she's really cool speaking of Toads oh not to get off track here I guess I love paper, the new Paper Mario the only thing that puts me off is that every NPC in the game every uh, other character you speak to is a Toad so there's no character variety there and it's a little disappointing it's Mushroom Kingdom I know, but in every other Paper Mario game, there's, there's these really cool characters that mm. you speak to. And it doesn't... Each Toad... Some Toads have different personalities and whatever, but... I don't know. There's just this Toad mayhem going on with Nintendo at the moment. Well, I mean, you know, look at the first cutscene to Mario Galaxy when you're in that world where it's just all Toads. 
I mean, there's so many toads. Mm, that's true. Why are they called toads anyway? They don't look like they look. They're, they're mushrooms, but they're called toads. Toadstool. Oh yeah, true. <laughs> oh yeah. It's odd when you actually get, think about it, hey. <sighs> also, a little Listen. little fun fact. Um, the creator or developer or something of Mario, I think the creator of Mario, I don't know, was talking about Mario in an interview and s- revealed that he was about 25 years old. Oh, yeah, I remember that. How do you feel about that? I thought he was at least 30 in, th- in his 30s. Yeah? Yeah. He's pretty spry. Because for... of his moustache, you know? Yeah. I wonder what he would look at without the moustache. Huh. Mario's been through some adventures. <laughs> But anyway, Captain Toad. Um, yeah. If there was a sequel, I mean, I don't think it would be Captain Toad 2. It would be Captain Toad something, something, something. You know, mm-hmm. just with some words. Um, just a, a straight-up sequel to Captain Toad. I think they just have to do basically the same thing. You yeah. Know, you can't really change that game a lot. I love how the... I, I love just how the maps are really small. I mean, Toad's got his own thing now. Usually when you play a Mario game like that, the, the map's quite big and everything. You know, Toad. it's just Toad's game. Um yeah it's really cool it's a good game I haven't finished it because it's pretty tricky yeah especially to 100% it yeah. did, did you find it annoying the, the mobility of Toad you can't really jump that high you can't really move that fast you can't jump at all oh you can't jump at all no you, you can run a little bit yeah um no it's just something you have to get used to because yeah. it is so the maps are quite small and yeah that's how they want you to beat the puzzles I suppose sequel to um Mario Maker a side game on that how awesome would it be to build your own little toad Captain Toad maps wow that'd be tricky you've got your little um, maybe it's a rectangular prism or something block mm. and you're filling in that that'd be cool wow you have to put a lot of thought into that yeah oh yeah I guess that's um, like you know that game Picross yeah I think you can I think there's a Picross game where you can make your own mm. maybe mm. maybe I'm just ma- thinking that up hmm Anyway, but yeah, I'd like to see a sequel. Just uh, before I forget as well, um, something you're not into, but Super Mario Run, the uh, iPhone yeah. game. Yeah. That's coming out December 15th, I think. Okay. For $15. Yeah, that's expensive. Really? I know it's I know it's expensive, but I have no problem in paying for that. I'm definitely not going to get it for $15. Yeah. There looks like there's a lot to it, though. There's, there's more than there's just that endless runner, though. Still, a mobile game for fifteen dollars? I don't think so. You can get like Final Fantasy and stuff. If... But if there's a lot to it, then why would they release, you know, a game like New Super Mario Bros. for sixty dollars? Oh, because it's smaller than that. There can't be much to it then, because New Super Mario Bros. There's not a lot to that. There's just different levels. There's like twenty hours on that. <laughs> Didn't roll your eyes at me. <laughs> I know you're so against Nintendo going uh, mobile, but I think this I'm not is... against it. It's a smart move for them. It's just that I don't want to see huge franchi- franchises moved to mobile. It won't be moved. Look at look at Switch. Anyway, I, I'm pretty excited for it, and I'll happily pay fifteen dollars. Fantasy Life has moved to mobile. Oh, I mean permanently. That, well, Fantasy Life Two is coming out on mobile. It's not coming out on anything else. Oh. Well, there's a Professor so Layton game going there too. Yeah. No, I think there's Duel. It's the same game going on both. But, oh man, I just re- remembered, but I forgot. Never mind. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> uh, the Bravely Default is mm. getting a mobile game. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's the same game, isn't it? Just ported to mobile. The original Bravely Default. Oh, is it? I'm pretty sure that's that's it. Oh, okay. That's boring then. Yeah, lucky. That's a, that's a big game for mobile. It's massive. That'd, like, be, so, that'd be so annoying to play on the mobile though. Yeah, a hundred hour game on the mobile? No way. iPad? You play it on your iPad? Ugh, still. Nah. Mm. My iPad's so sluggish now. I, c- I can't do anything on it. It's time to update. Your yeah, your yours is just old. I don't think I would. You know they still update them every year. Every year? Every year there's a new model that comes out. Wow. I don't think... Like, I use my iPad mainly for YouTube, to be honest. Because mm. during the week, I hardly turn my computer on because I'm at work all the time. Mm. So I just use my iPad. I'm wondering if it's even worth 
getting another one. Do it. Perhaps I should. Anyway, I, I think we've come to the end here. That's it. Um, episode 32. Um, and we'll be back next week. Maybe. Don't maybe, promise. Maybe not. Don't make promises. Could, be, could become monthly. Who knows? Yes. <laughs> See you later. Bye.